Hi everyone! So, on today's video, like I promised on last video, we will see some case studies on depression. So, let's go for it. Our first study is about a woman which is 21 years old with difficulty in getting to sleep for about two months. She is feeling generally unhappy. She is socializing much less, but still performing most of her usual routines. She is presenting little energy and she is also spending more time watching television. So, we will answer what to ask to clarify the diagnosis and also after clarifying it, what options to advise. Let's go for it. Okay, so the first question is what to ask to clarify the diagnosis. So, what do you think? To clarify the diagnosis, it's very important we will explore some signs and symptoms of anxiety and or depression. So, we should ask this patient more about any worrying thoughts, about appetite changes, any thoughts about suicide, uh, reduced concentration, loss of interest in her hobbies, or even if there is a decreased libido. So, after asking our patient, we will conclude that she doesn't uh, have any appetite changes, neither like any weight loss, she doesn't have any thoughts about suicide, so that's a no as well, and, but she might have some worrying thoughts. So she got like some financial concerns going on. Financial concerns. However, these financial concerns are not excessive. So, taking all these into account, we can suspect that this patient might be uh, with a sub-threshold depression or if it is depression, it will be a mild case of depression. Alright, based on this uh, conclusion then, what options should we advise? So, we have seen that we shouldn't just jump to uh, thinking there is a straightforward case of depression. It might be just some anxiety. Uh, so, the first good option to consider is sleep hygiene. So, we should for two weeks at least advise the patient to have a nice sleep hygiene and then after two weeks reaccess and see if that was enough to solve all the problems or if after that we still need something more, we need to consider any therapy. So, for the first two weeks we will advise it in sleep hygiene and what that means we should advise the patient to have like the sleeping environment uh, comfortable at an acceptable temperature and not too bright we should also advise the patient that prior to bed uh, time they should avoid any heavy meals excessive exercise or stimulants like drinks containing caffeine and also advise them to strongly associate the bed only with the sleep so what that does mean? It means like not to go to bed and read there or not watching television whilst in bed or listening to radio, etc. So after doing these two weeks, we will see that it, if it was just anxiety mixed with insomnia and lack of sleep that was causing all these symptoms or if by any chance is really a mild case of uh, depression and in that case uh, we might consider give the patient some therapy. So that's the first case. And before we jump to another case study, just give a like to this video and subscribe to the channel. Hey, what happened? Now we've got a second case. So in this case, it's a male patient, 49 years old. He was just admitted as emergency in the psychiatric unit. He had been prescribed fluoxetine 20 milligrams once a day uh, for two months, but they were not changing much, so he was uh, swapped from uh, fluoxetine to citalopram, uh, 20 milligrams once a day, and he has been taking it for four weeks, but he is lacking motivation and doesn't show any interest in life. Okay, taking this scenario into account, what should we do? What are the treatment options? So, before considering uh, changing straight away medicine, so he has taken SSRI, then he was changing to another SSRI and it seems not to be working, we still first to consider the adherence, if the patient is taking the medicine as normal. So we should ask the patient and if necessary any family members to access if the patient has been taking the doses as he should, if he is not missing any days. So after doing that, 
uh, we will understand that the patient is taking the doses as he should. So, uh, there is just another option, which is increase the dosage of the SSRI. However, the SSRIs, they have a flat dose response curve. So, there is no much benefit in enhancing unless the patient will be a smoker or a fast metabolizer. And we will find out that the patient is not a smoker. So, the best option is perhaps to change to another uh, drug class. So, if our uh, most plausible option is changing the medicine, we should, because it's not a newly prescribed and newly diagnosed patient, we should go back in time and see his previous medication. So if we do an in-depth review of the previous medication, we'll find out that this patient, three years ago, has taken Velafaxin 75 mg modified release twice a day. And this medication seemed to give him much better results. But when we go to do this investigation, then we understand that the patient after going out of the hospital with this medication, he stopped because he was afraid that he would get like hooked up to the medication. So he was afraid he would get addicted to the medication. So what should we do? Definitely we should then consider this medication because it's a different class. Previously he was taking uh, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which like we've seen in the last video, it increased the serotonin in the synapse we will instead give him a SNRI. So it is a serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. So it doesn't only increase the serotonin, but also the noradrenaline. So it contains like additional effects for depression. However, there are some side effects possible with this medication, but because the patient has taken it in the past and it was effective, that's a good solution to start with. We should just educate our patient. The first thing we should educate this patient on is there is no addiction to antidepressants. Other drug classes that go to the nervous system like benzodiazepines, they can give addiction, but antidepressants, they do not give any addiction. They just need, when we think about stopping, being withdrawal slowly in order to avoid any withdrawal symptoms. Because Velafaxin will also increase the second neurotransmitter, the noradrenaline, it will have some physiological effects, additional ones. So it can do some vasoconstriction and also increase the heart rate. So it's possible the patient's blood pressure go higher as well. So this information should be given to the patient and the, like close monitoring of the blood pressure should be done as well uh, alongside with this new therapy patient will do a close monitoring of the blood pressure. Blah, blah.